the ones that I looked up to then, as I say, Andy Gray, Brian Little, and then it was Gary Shaw, Sid Cowens. And, and later when I was actually involved in football and playing myself, still watching Villa from afar, it became Paul McGrath, um, you know, and I do remember one player who, who we signed, uh, a French player, who everybody really got excited about, called Didier Cisse. Didier Cisse, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I remember him coming and, and playing against Manchester United and we were sat in the Trinity Road by the dugouts and it was like, we hadn't seen foreign flair before. And it was so exciting to go and watch him. But even playing the, the season we won the we won the title, going and watching the game against Ipswich and seeing Arnold Muir and play and, and players like that, Frank Tyson, it was you know great to see that there was actual foreign flair coming into the game then. And let's be let, we have to be honest about it. That's what's actually you know uh, probably improved you know uh, our league and the way we play football as a nation. Chuck. Those that didn't see Gordon Cowens, because he was a star in Italy, um, he's been mentioned a lot on this podcast, because along with Alan Devonshire, he, he represents to me a kind of hidden midfielders who were, were phenomenal, gems, but probably didn't get wide enough recognition. From a football perspective, as well as from a fan's perspective, why was Sid so special to you? People that didn't see him, try and encapsulate him. Um, he could do everything. He could he could tackle. He wasn't he wasn't built with uh, a massive physique, but he never shirked a tackle. And he had that ability of sliding in and wrapping his foot around the ball and coming out the other side with it. Um, but his passing range was incredible, right foot and left foot. And I I was fortunate enough to know uh, become good friends with Pat Hurd, who who played for a short period for Villa was on the bench when they won the European Cup. And he used to say that, you know, uh, Sid Cowens, he, he could peel oranges with his toes. He was that good. <laughs> well, um, in that case, this, this our sponsors, Bessie 65, want us to ask you. It's a tough one, so I apologise. But we've led each other into this. <laughs> they say, who's the most talented player you have worked with? Because you've, you've set a stall out with watching McGrath and Sid Cowens and Andy Gray... Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year in the same season. The same year, um, 77. I don't know if it... I don't think it's been done before. I'm not even sure if it's been done since. But this it, this sticks, sticks it right on you. Dean, who's the most talented player you've worked with? And if you want to, get, if you want to dodge the question, you can say, or watched. They didn't ask no. that, but I'm giving you... No, I, I, don't, I don't need to not dodge it because he's just been sold for £100 million. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's an easy one. You know, Jack Grealish is... He's a phenomenal talent. Um, and the biggest thing I like about him is he knows he's talented, he's confident in his own ability, but he's humble enough and coachable. And they're the two, the two words that I think are really strong in, in terms of, you know, helping to... Because my, my job is, is as a teacher of football to help players, you know, um, fulfil their potential, get better. And he was coachable, and that's a big word for me, because there are some players who aren't coachable. Uh, when you know you tell them something, you know, you, you two weeks later you're telling them again. Four weeks later, if you're telling them, then you know you've got a problem. Jack didn't have that. You could tell him something, and he'd come and ask you a question the following day about it because he would have processed it, gone home, had a look, um, and he just improved all the time. And you know. I've told the story before, and I know he's just told it recently. When I first came into the club, I think the club, I think we were 12 games into a championship season, and he had zero goals and one assist. And I said, you want to be at the top of this game. You're not going to be with them numbers. You've got to concentrate on, concentrate on getting your numbers up. And there was, I showed him a video clip, and I think it was about against Preston, uh, which might have been Steve's last, Steve Bruce's last game. And Jack was picking up the ball behind our centre-halves. I said, you've now, you've now got 11 players to go and beat, to go and create some.